I would assume that by now just about everyone is aware of the 2,000 odd staff layoffs at Microsoft, at Activision Blizzard. However, I want to talk about the wider implications of this because the trend I've just been seeing lately, especially with Microsoft, especially with Xbox, but also other conglomerates, these huge gaming organizations, is just a trend towards killing creativity. Gaming is a product. We'll only pretend that it's an art form when it's convenient for us for tax purposes or when we're trying to justify low wages to staff. Games are art then, but for any other circumstance, games are purely business. It's about the money and I really think that's what these layoffs represent. The short of it is for me, I don't think Microsoft, Xbox, I don't think any of it is going to be good for gaming long term. I think they are a stain on the industry. They are leeches. I don't think they really care about games. I think Phil Spencer is a hack. I think he's just a, a corporate suck up to the Microsoft CEO. And all he cares about Microsoft being on the top. He doesn't care about gaming. He doesn't have a real passion for gaming. And I say all of that partly because I want to just give what might be a hot take on these layoffs to start with. Because I always see whenever a company lays people off, which has happened Heaps in recent past, it happened with Unity, the game engine developer who were in hot water ages ago for changing their license costs. They laid heaps of people off and it's happening again now. Whenever staff, they lose their jobs, people online just have this sort of weird mindset where it's like the only thing you can say is I'm so sorry for the people who lost their jobs and you can't say anything else. There can be no other discussion. Now, it obviously sucks that these people lost their jobs. It, it's probably a tough market right now. It'll be a tricky period for them. I hope they're able to find a new job. But what I will say is when these people online have this mindset like it's a company's responsibility to keep people employed, that is their responsibility, I don't think these people understand that there is some nuance there. It's really safe to be like, fuck you company, you fired a bunch of people, that's it. It's really easy to say that, but there's always some nuance there. And what that is to me is your responsibility as a company, even if it is to keep people employed, I don't really think that, but let's just say it is. A company should be priority one, keeping people in their jobs. Even if that was true, sometimes you have to let people go to keep everyone else's job secure. And what I mean by that is if a company needs to keep making money to stay afloat, they need to keep producing at least as much money as they're spending or more, they're bringing in that profit, that is often going to be tough. The market changes. Sometimes it is difficult to make money. So if a company keeps people in jobs where they know that they're not really needed anymore, and in Activision, Microsoft's case, it, it's probably because Microsoft as an entity, they've got their own people to do a lot of these jobs, so they've moved people on. If Microsoft know these jobs aren't needed, and they keep people on for the sake of it, for PR or to keep these lunatics online happy, if they do that, it's actually putting everyone else's job at risk. And they've got, I think, 20,000 plus employees at Activision alone. So sometimes it's unfortunately just necessary. And we can simply say it sucks, but I think there's some people who have that mindset, like this shouldn't be happening, you should have kept them employed, which isn't really true. Hopefully not everyone thinks that. So you can be sad for them, but it, it may be necessary. But again, I say that because I'm not biased towards Microsoft. I don't like them. If anything, I'm more negative rather than positive. So I'm not shilling for them by any means. The example I gave applies to any company, certainly not in particular Microsoft. There is a caveat to that though. And that is that even though they've kind of framed this, I think, as they've gotten rid of jobs that aren't really needed, we know that they cancelled a game. In particular, a survival game that Blizzard had been working on. It was going to be their first, I believe, new IP for quite some time, probably since Overwatch. That has been canned despite years in development, despite a big announcement a little while ago where they were trying to get everyone excited. Now, why has this happened? It's probably because the game just wasn't that fun. It might have been a Redfall situation. Microsoft left that one alone. It came out and people were kind of upset. They were like, why didn't you cancel this pile of junk? It was revealed Microsoft were pretty hands off. So maybe they've changed their tune a bit and they cancelled this survival game so they didn't repeat the same mistake. That could be one argument. 
I don't think that's true. I think the real reason they cancelled this is because it's not really a sure win. They bought Activision Blizzard because they wanted all of these humongous existing IPs, like, again, Overwatch, like Warcraft, like Call of Duty. And they're not really interested in some new creative project that might be boom or, or it might be bust. It might really take off or not do very well. So they've gone, no, get rid of this. Let's put our resources all in on Call of Duty, maybe Warcraft and let's leave it there and so this is gone there have been murmurs that there were development problems as well but given there's six years in development I'm not sure and this tweet kind of backs that up this person says the entire survival team just got laid off this person's going to be radio silent while they sort out, feel my emotions, blah, blah, blah. I loved working on this project with my team. It was the best thing I ever did in my career. I'm only sorry no one will get to see it. Now, this person, I mean, they're probably upset they've lost their job. It's totally understandable, but it kind of suggests that the game was at least in a, a reasonable state. I'm not sure if you would talk about being upset that no one gets to see the project you're working on if it was in a, a totally useless state. It could have been, but let's just think for a minute that Maybe it was going okay, but Microsoft thought it might not be the next Call of Duty, so we're going to move on. It really feels like to me what Microsoft's next steps are going to be is they are not going to invest AAA budgets, hundreds of millions of dollars, into projects that aren't definite wins, like the next Call of Duty. For now, they might put money into smaller projects like uh, an Ori of the Blind Forest, Will of the Wisps, maybe the AA kind of games like Avowed that feel a bit bigger, but they're not on the scale of a Call of Duty or a Spider-Man 2, these games that have budgets into the hundreds of millions. We know Spider-Man 2, 300 million or something was spent on that. And that kind of told us the state of the industry. Hearing about these budgets like Spider-Man 2, where it's clear the car crash is coming where gaming just takes a big fall ballooning budgets companies like Microsoft can see the writing on the wall that eventually just no matter what you do a game just won't bring in a profit too much money has been spent to make it so I think they are changing direction slightly it felt like for a while Microsoft would just get the checkbook out for anything they were buying these studios they were allowed to work on whatever they wanted that seems to be changing now. I think they're worried. Game Pass subscription numbers, they're going down. And that is why I talk about them kind of killing creativity because they bought up all of these studios, including these smaller ones like Obsidian, In Exile, developers who I've been fans of either now or in the past. It seemed like we might get good things because Microsoft had the budgets, the money there to support these studios. But it's already having a bit of a shift. With this survival game being cancelled, what's going to happen to existing studios under their umbrella? If they maybe are sort of working on a passion project and maybe they run into some trouble, is Microsoft just going to kill it and force them to work on one of the many IPs that they now own? Maybe just a, a sure win where they know they can at least recoup some money. The whole Game Pass strategy just doesn't seem to be working. It sounded like maybe a nifty idea at the start where you pay 15, 20 bucks a month, you get access to all of these games. But Microsoft are not turning a profit on that. It's, it's not working. And that's the case for a lot of subscription services in entertainment. We hear all the time about how Netflix are trying to put up prices. They're trying to stop password sharing. And I don't even think they're spending as much money on their shows anymore. They don't have a good lineup, it looks like, from their originals. It's just all garbage. So they're struggling, the Netflixes of the world, and it's going to be the same for games. And I think Microsoft can now see that. They've seen Netflix have a good go of it in TV, start well, now things, there's trouble in the waters. So they're probably seeing that down the road, and they're going, well, we need to make a shift now. If we're not making profit at the moment, when we're really the only major player, what's going to happen when, say, Ubisoft start offering a subscription? which is happening. They've already talked about how they want us to get comfortable with not owning our own games. There's a shift there with them. It's probably going to be EA next. They've had some similar services. I know there's an EA sub where you can get some games. So many of them are trying to do it. So I believe that Microsoft know that Game Pass won't be profitable in its current state. So they're going to make this really big shift. It's going to be only the really big AAA games like Call of Duty. 
And the reason for that is because they know they need games that millions of people come to straight away because of the brand name. Some survival game, a new IP, it's iffy if you're going to get a lot of players straight away. That's all Microsoft really want. They want eyeballs immediately on the game for one real purpose, because they want to be getting microtransaction sales immediately, battle pass purchases. That only happens with games that are popular because people don't want to invest a ton of money in a game that they know might not go anywhere. We've seen the anthems. We've got Suicide Squad around the corner. People will be wary about investing in those sorts of games because how many times have they just had all of their content cut a year down the track? The game ends up dead. If you've spent money on it, you've basically flushed it down the toilet because the game by then is, is probably free to play. It's not being supported anymore. So Microsoft can see that gamers might be wary of spending money on, on iffy propositions. So it's going to be all Call of Duty, all Warcraft, all of these large names, and the creativity is basically going to be stifled. It's going to be dead. These sorts of games, the live services they're going to focus on, it's just going to be that. It's all open your wallet psychology. Let's get people addicted. Who gives a toss if they're actually enjoying it or not? Sadly, this shift's happening just about everywhere. We've seen that Sony are trying to do some of the same. They made a real pivot to live service. I don't think it has paid off for them. They've had development troubles, but that doesn't really mean the mindset's not still the same. If they're going back to single player, it's only because they failed to get live service right. They'll probably go back to it. This happens all the time. Xbox, in 2013, the Xbox One, they wanted to go all digital, and then they got clowned on. Sony made fun of them. They had that whole ad about sharing a game. It's so easy. Just give them the physical copy and you're done. But now 10 years later, with the news about the layoffs, we also learned that Microsoft laid off their retail divisions, meaning they're going all in on digital. The Xbox Series X refresh, apparently that's going to be digital only. And what's going to happen in a few years when you no longer have the physical option, if Microsoft take that away from you? Well, now they've got all the power. They could basically decide, you know what? We don't want you to be able to buy a game digitally anymore. I know you don't really own it, but you, you get what I mean. You can just spend 80 bucks and now you've got it to play. They can just go, no, 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 you have to subscribe to Game Pass. That's the only way you can consume our games. And that is what they really want but they want to do it in a way where they know they're going to make a profit. They're not going to allow that to be a good deal forever, which is why most of the games on there, there might be the smaller creative ones to bring people in who, who like different types of games, but very much the AAA space, it's these live services in short thing IPs with a massive push on microtransactions, battle passes, everything else, pay to win, whatever else you can think of, because they've seen that, Netflix aren't making money purely releasing shows and getting 20 bucks a month. So they know they need to get the sub plus more. And that only comes with the scummy monetization that you get in games like Call of Duty, phone games, everything else. This is sadly where the entire AAA industry is headed. It's a very bad thing and it's very hard to escape as well because even smaller independent studios, they keep getting brought up. And again, every time Microsoft buys a studio, it's another one that they could lock away at any point. And when I think about those smaller AA developers, well, Embracer Group were buying up heaps of them and now shit's hit the fan with that company and heaps of their studios are very sadly closing. So we might lose all of them too. Even if you try and ignore Microsoft, well, Embracer Group, they're going to lose all of these smaller studios. And then you're kind of left with the indie ones. And I very much love indie games, but sometimes you also do want that larger scale product, which is difficult to get from a game with a small number of people. And given the costs of development, wages for staff and things like that, it's going to make it very hard for indie developers to scale outside of just making a game maybe part-time on the weekend from your job or something like that. Those sorts of games are what we'll see in the indie space. Anything bigger, it, it may get tough. And just on the topic of Microsoft's incompetence, there was also this where someone says if Microsoft starts to penny pinch on Call of Duty development by using more external contractors as they did with Halo, they will, mark my words, destroy the COD franchise just like they did with Halo. So basically what happened there is apparently with Halo, 
Microsoft wouldn't just commit to hiring people. They kept just contracting out work probably to people overseas. And it's part of the reason that the Halo franchise is basically dead. Who cares about Halo these days? Sometimes I'm thinking I might play the campaign, but it's usually pretty disappointing. Now, I think this is actually partly an ideology thing. I don't want to make it sort of too political. However, there's this mindset sometimes that companies have where they think if you hire someone from India or from some other country, that you'll just get the exact same quality of work as you will here. There are cultural differences, and these people don't have the same training, all of these different circumstances, which often results in, in you just not really getting the same level of quality back, where if you just hired someone local, you might get something better. I've seen it here in my country, where a lot of companies tried to outsource, it didn't work, and they had to start hiring again here at home. So it's something to think about. I know it's controversial, but you, you probably get what I mean. This is something Microsoft clearly like to do. They fail with it, but they seem to be persisting with it. These people just can never seem to self-reflect and realize that they're stuffing everything up because they're making so much money in other areas, more that corporate side of like Office 365, cloud for businesses. They're making humongous amounts of money there. It seems like they're just running the gaming side of things into the ground and they don't care. It's a small part of their business for now. They're looking at the long term. They don't really care if they kill creativity, which is what I'm thinking. They'll just persist with it. A lot of companies are doing it. The only way we can really fight back is to continue to support studios like Larian who are out there. They're making great games. They're just releasing them normally. You can buy it and, and you genuinely can because you can get that on gold which you can download DRM free. They can never take that away from us. So it's it's always nice to see. I hope things change. I hope people see this, that they consider not supporting these Ubisoft subscriptions, Game Pass subscriptions, because everything going on, these layoffs, cancelling games, more talk about subs, you not owning things, it's going to lead us down a dark path, and I just want to see gaming in a, a healthy space. I hope that happens. But thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.